um, onboarding and offboarding of mobile devices increasingly users are doing work on their mobile devices than they once performed on laptops and desktop computers moreover they are demanding that they be able to use their personal devices to work on the company network this presents a huge security issue for the IT department because they have to secure these devices while simultaneously exercising much less control over them. The security team must have a way to prevent these devices from introducing malware and other security issues to the network. Bring your own device BYOD initiatives can be successful if implemented correctly. <coughs> The key is to implement control over these personal devices that leave the safety of your network and return later after potentially being exposed to environments that are out of your control. One of the benefits that has been employed successfully to accomplish this goal is network sorry is network access control NAC covered in the next the next section. NAC today's network access control goes beyond simply authenticating users and devices before they are allowed into the network. <clears throat> While the with these challenges presented by today's mobile workforce, it must go further. These services are called network admission control in the Cisco world and network access protection in the Microsoft world. But the goals of these features are the same to examine all devices requesting network access for malware, missing security updates and any other security issues any device could potentially introduce to the network. <clears throat> In some cases, network access control goes beyond simply denying access to systems that fail inspection. NAC can even redirect the failed system to a remediation server, which will then apply patches and updates before allowing the device access to the network. These systems can be especially helpful in supporting a BYOD initiative while still maintaining the security of the network. Policies, procedures and regulations. It is up to us individually or corporately to nail down exactly what solid guidelines there should be for policies and procedures for network installation and operation. Some organizations are bound by regulations that also affect how they conduct their business. And that kind of thing clearly needs to be involved in the choices but let me take a minute to make sure you understand the difference between policies <coughs> and procedures policies govern how a network is configured and operated as well as how people are expected to behave on it they are in place to direct things like how users access resources and which employees and groups get various types of network access and or privileges basically Policies give people guidelines as to what they are expected to do. Procedures are precise descriptions of the appropriate steps to follow in a given situation, such as what to do when an employee is terminated or what to do in the event of a natural disaster. <clears throat> they often dictate precisely how to execute policies as well of note. One of the most important aspects of any policy or procedure is that it's given high level management support. This is because neither will be very effective if there aren't any consequences for not following the rules. Policies. I talked extensively about security policies in chapter 14, network threats and mitigation. So if you're drawing a blank, you can go back there for details. Here's a summary list of factors and most policies cover security policies. These are policies applied to users to help maintain security in the network. Clean desk policies. These policies are designed to prevent users from leaving sensitive documents on unattended desks. Network access. Who, 
what and how. These policies control which users can access which portions of the network. They should be designed around job responsibilities, acceptable use policies, AUP. These policies should be as comprehensive as possible and should outline every action that is allowed in addition to those that are not allowed. They should also specify which devices are allowed, which websites are allowed and the proper use of company equipment. <coughs> Consent to monitoring. These policies are designed to constantly remind users that their activities are subject to monitoring as they are using company equipment and as such they have no expectation of privacy privileged use agreement whenever a user is given some right normally possessed by the administrator they thus possess a privileged user account in this agreement they agree to use these rights responsibly password policy this policy defines the requirements for all passwords including length complexity and age licensing restrictions these restrictions define the procedures to ensure <clears throat> that all software license agreements are not violated. International export controls in accordance with all agreements between countries in which the organization does business. All allowable export destinations and import source sources are defined. Data loss prevention. This policy defines all procedures for preventing loss and egress of sensitive data from the network and may include references to use of data loss prevention DLP software, remote access policies. These policies define their requirements for all remote access connections to the enterprise. This may cover VPN, dial-up and wireless access methods. Incident response policies these policies define a scripted and repeatable process for responding to incidents and responsibilities of various roles in the network in this process. Non-disclosure agreement NDA, all scenarios in which contractors and other third parties must execute a non-disclosure agreement are defined system lifecycle. The steps in the asset life cycle are defined including acquisition, implementation, maintenance and decommissioning. <clears throat> it specifies certain due diligence activities to be performed in each phase asset disposal. This is usually a subset of the system life cycle and prescribes methods for ensuring that sensitive data is removed from devices before disposal change management these policies ensure a consistent approach to managing changes to network configurations disposal of network equipment use of recording equipment how passwords are managed length and complexity required and how often they need to be changed types of security hardware in place how often to do backups <coughs> and to take other fault tolerant measures what to do with user accounts after an employee leaves the company and um, procedures these are the actions to be taken in specific situations disciplinary action to be taken if a policy is broken what to do during an audit how issues are reported to management what to do when someone has locked themselves out of their account how to properly install or remove software on servers what to do if files on the servers suddenly appear to be missing or altered how to respond when a network computer has a virus actions to be taken <clears throat> if it appears that a hacker has broken into the network actions to take if there is a physical emergency like a fire or flood so you get the right idea for every policy on your network there should be a credible related procedure that clearly dictates the steps to take in order to fulfill it <clears throat> and you know that policies and procedures are as unique as the wide array of companies and organizations that create and employ them but all this doesn't mean you can borrow good ideas and plans from others and tweak them a bit 
to meet your requirements. So I'm going to leave it here today for this video. If you like listening, please consider like, sharing and subscribing. Thank you.